Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real time product availability and fast delivery. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast, hour two. Greetings, America. Welcome. It's Eric Erickson here, coast to coast. The phone number this open line Friday, 877-973-7425. Should you wish to be on the program? Yes. Open line Friday. You call in about the things you so passionately care about. Now, I got to talk about Jonah Goldberg. Jonah Goldberg for years was at National Review, great columnist, um, and he's moved over to the Dispatch. He and my buddy Steve Hayes over there, uh, I am one of the the founding donors of the Dispatch, I guess I need to disclose to you. I like the work they do, a uh, center-right perspective, lots of good investigations of uh Congress and and the administration and foreign policy. Uh, It's center-right news. It is definitely uh, not uh, Trump-friendly, which I don't really care about one way or the other, Uh, but they do great work, uh, and they've done great work for a while. And and Jonah is a thought-provoking conservative. What I find so funny is is he's very aggressively not a Trump guy. And for years, a lot of the people who now vilify him uh, held up liberal fascism, his book, Liberal Fascism, as, as one of the best books they'd have read. And by the way, it's a phenomenal book. It really is. Uh, he's, a, he's a brilliant writer. Uh, I'm a little jealous uh, at his writing style. But he has set, uh, him, it, well, people have wanted to light him on fire. I was going to say he set himself on fire, but he really didn't. Others did with something he said on CNN. And I, I I got some disagreements with him, but some agreement with him. He didn't really say anything offensive other than some people want to be offended and I, I need to play you this audio because we need to talk about this. This is shaping a lot of discussions and thoughts of people on the right when it comes to the donor classes. So listen to this. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, it tells me it's, it's early yet for the grassroots work in Iowa. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what the baseline is or what small donors was four years ago or anything like that. I do think, though, we're seeing time and time again that political contests are being nationalized. The so small donors in Iowa are... are they're more important as an indicator of ground uh, grassroots support than anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I just also think that we are dealing with a time where there are a lot of people. There was a there was a lot of cheering and and self congratulation about the rise of small donors a decade ago, and now small donors are actually one of the biggest problems for democracy for the GOP because um, small donor large donors actually have a strategic view about moderation, who can win, who can't. Small donors really are just venting their spleen with yep. their credit card, and um, and they lock candidates into positions that can hurt them in a general election. All right. Uh, so people are upset with his comments on small donors. I'm actually upset with Goldberg's comments on large donors because I deal with these people, and I got to tell you, I think large donors are often very dumb. So large donors tend to be more moderate than the grassroots donors, very much more moderate. Uh, they tend to be interested in Wall Street and business. Uh, they, they don't like culture issues, education's icky for them. A lot of the stuff that the small dollars care about, they really despise. They uh, tend to be not only just more moderate or liberal, They also tend to surround themselves with gatekeepers who help them spend their money. And many of those gatekeepers are partisan operatives who steer the donors in particular ways. If you think that smart donor, that that large donors, big donors are really smart, uh, look at the people who flooded Jeb Bush's super PAC in 2015, 2016. They, they, they wanted someone who was perceived to be more moderate and they liked him, and they poured their money in, and he lost. 
I don't think that large donors really have a sense of things and how politics works. In fact, I, I've had so many conversations with so many uh, millionaire and billionaire donors of the GOP, and they all matter of fact. Like, like I've actually run political campaigns. I've done the polling. I've done the mail. I've done the focus groups. I've done the door-to-door -door campaigns. I've run the races. I've won the races. And you sit in these rooms with these millionaires and billionaires, and they like to pontificate as if they're experts on politics. And every, uh, I mean, two of them, like even when I went in March out to Las Vegas and sat in a room with a bunch of the billionaires, they, they just tell you what is so, and so often it actually is not so. And they expect you to agree with them. They're not asking you to challenge them. They want to be agreed with. I, it, it, it always leaves me dumbfounded all the time to go in and talk to these millionaire and billionaire donors, and they are some of the stupidest people when it comes to politics. They really have no freaking clue how it actually works. But they're surrounded with gatekeepers who come from partisan backgrounds, from particular wings of the GOP. Almost all of them are moderate as well. And they steer their money and whisper in their ears, and they just make stupid decisions. But I have to tell you, I'm a big fan of grassroots donors. And I think Citizens United was a good case in the Supreme Court because it allowed equilibrium between large donors and small dollars, small dollar donors. Large donors were always going to find a way in. Money is the water of politics, and it will always flow. You will not stop it from flowing. And Citizens United brought down the gates and the walls that kept small dollar donors from being competitive and it worked. But I do think Jonah is right and this he's getting vilified for saying something true that right now small dollar donors are working on their passions and emotions. Every major poll that's asked the question has shown the same thing that a lot of Republicans particularly grassroots conservatives right now are more interested in supporting a candidate who agrees with them than a candidate who can win. I don't think it's bad for democracy. I actually think it's good for democracy that small dollar donors can shape the field. What I think is bad for democracy is that so many of them are in a burn it all down mode as opposed to we want to win mode. And so they're backing bulls in China shops who can wreck their own party internally. And by the way, I think it's notable that a lot of the people who have come into the GOP in the last few years, in large part because of Donald Trump, weren't actually Republican voters. Many of them were center-left when it came to economic populism issues. And that's why we're seeing the GOP shift on these issues away from conservatism. I don't think what Jonah said is out of bounds. I, I disagree with him that it's, it's bad for democracy. I don't think it is. Uh, but I do think it's bad for the GOP to have a bunch of small dollar donors who are, they hate the party. When you as a Republican party have your small dollar donor base hate your guts and fund the candidates who also hate your party, uh, it's very hard for your party to get ahead without making fundamental reforms. But those fundamental reforms may put them out of step with so many other Americans that you win the primary and lose the general. Remember, the goal of an election is not to win a primary. The goal of an election has never been to win a primary. The goal of the election is to win the election. If you win the primary and take steps that cost you the general election, you're a bad candidate. And a lot of Republican candidates who are winning primaries are doing so. And if you don't believe me, if you don't believe Jonah Goldberg, look at Kerry Lake. Look at Blake Masters. Look at Ozma Met. Look at Herschel Walker. The grassroots base grabbed hold of these people. Blake Masters is interesting because several different pollsters came out and said he focus grouped worse than any candidate they had ever focus grouped before. But he was Trump's pick, so the base went with him. Dr. Oz took a race that uh, I, I do think his opponent could have won. His opponent lost by a tenth of a point in the primary after Donald Trump's last-minute endorsement of Ahmed Oz, who ran his campaign into the ground and lost to John Fetterman. Dr. Oz lost to John Fetterman. That's all you need to say about how bad a candidate he was. And then there's Herschel Walker. 
Herschel Walker is, is uh, somewhat different in that because of who Herschel Walker was, he was going to win the Republican primary. Donald Trump endorsing Herschel Walker didn't matter. What mattered is Donald Trump getting Walker into the race. Once in, he wasn't going to lose unless everyone made a very concerted effort to expose the GOP to all the stuff the Democrats were. Y'all, I was on radio repeatedly during that primary and said, listen, these are the attacks that are going to come. You need to be prepared. You need to be prepared. And so many of the responses were, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Herschel can get, Herschel can take a tackle. He can take a tackle. Y'all, I'm telling you, I, I, I had breakfast with the man and I was like, oh my gosh, really? We, we want to send this guy to, to Washington? I'll, I'll back you because I think you'll vote the right way. But oh, I don't know that you can win. And he didn't win. The problem is that uh, we have traded passion and emotion for reason and thought. And th- by the way, this is a cultural phenomenon right now in postmodernism. It's not just small dollar donors. Everybody's doing it. We're, we're trading reason and rationality for emotion. We get fired up by someone, and here's the ultimate problem. And it's for the small dollars and the the small donors and the large donors. And this is something I think that, that Jonah missed. Although this really wasn't the place in this segment where he was talking about to go through this. It's the grifters who are the real problem. The grifters are excellent at pulling strings and emotions of the large dollar donors and the small dollar donors. And we're seeing a level of grift on the right right now. And by the, by grift, I mean the people who are lying to you to get your money, the people who are playing on your emotions to get your money and they're spending it on themselves. They're not spending it to win. My buddy Ken Cuccinelli ran for governor in Virginia. After running for governor of Virginia, he filed a lawsuit against some outside packs. Those outside packs were played on people's emotions, claiming they were going to fight to take back Virginia and get Ken Cuccinelli elected. These people lined their own pockets with money and didn't actually spend it to help Ken Cuccinelli get elected. And these small dollar donors were convinced these people were the white knights who were going to save them. They were writing checks to these grifters who took their money for themselves and bought beach houses and other stuff. And Cuccinelli, God bless him, he sued them. Good for him. This is the fundamental danger right now within the Republican Party is the grifters have gotten good at convincing small-dollar donors they're on their side. And the small-dollar donors are writing massive checks to people who will waste their life savings. There's a lack of discernment. That is one thing I think that the larger dollar donors are better at because they surround themselves with more people is they do have some better level of discernment. They still tend to back crappy candidates and do stupid things, but they're less likely to have their emotions whipped into a frenzy. Jonah Goldberg is getting attacked by mostly Trump supporters for saying what he said, that um, small dollar donors are just running with their emotions um, and, and they're hurting the party. But when you look at Herschel Walker, when you look at Dr. Oz, when you look at Blake Masters, when you look at Carrie Lake, when you look at so many of these uh, candidates for the House who lost, who they, they played on the emotions of the grassroots and claimed to be Trump-supporting people, and the grassroots funded them, he, he's got a point. He's got a point. The Republicans would have a larger, larger House majority right now, except even the Democrats knew they could prey on the emotions of small-dollar Republican donors in the Republican primaries and convince them to advance candidates who would lose in the general. It's exactly what the Democrats did. Everybody seems to know it. People just don't like that someone like Jonah Goldberg would have the audacity to point out the truth. I am a small businessman. The company that I run for my radio show, it's a small business. I've got employees. I don't have HR. You may be in that situation, and you may really need HR. Well, You may want to talk to Bambi. When running a business, your employees can create all sorts of interesting situations and they could get you in trouble. What happens when two employees are squabbling? One of them smells bad all the time. What do you do? How do you navigate the rules? With Bambi, you get access to your own dedicated HR manager starting at just $99 a month. They're available by phone, email, real-time chat. Onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance. Your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. Let Bambi handle your employees for you. Their HR autopilot automates important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. Listen, you want 
U.S.-based HR managers who give you experience, expertise, a personal touch you need to make it seem like they're a part of your team. They can cost eighty grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 a month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now. Type in Eric Erickson under podcast when you sign up. It'll help you. It'll help your company grow. It'll help you keep peace of mind. It's spelled B-A-M-B-E-E. Bam. B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Eric Erickson. Welcome back. It is Eric Erickson here. By the way, uh, the Florida Attorney General is going to join me at the top of the next hour. Uh, If you're listening live, that'll be 2.06 p.m. The Florida Attorney General uh, well, no, 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 nope, nope. Uh, bottom of the next hour. I'm sorry. So 2:35 p.m. Eastern Time, live. Ashley Moody to talk about the removal of that uh, state attorney in Florida, the Orlando state attorney who was so progressive was not um, not prosecuting criminals. So DeSantis removed her. So the Florida Attorney General Ashley Moody joins me at the bottom of the next hour, uh, listing live. It'll be 2:35 p.m. Um, Mike Pence, this exchange in Iowa has gone viral. The first part's going to be a little hard for you to hear, but then I want, but I want to play you the whole thing. Uh, it is a guy in a Red Sox jersey, an elderly gentleman, a boomer, asking Mike Pence a question. Uh, someone then stands up in front of him and, and yells at the guy to shut his mouth. Yeah, I want to play for you the whole exchange. It's gone fairly viral. Yes. Why did you commit treason on January 6th? That's it, buddy. Shut your mouth. And the Red Sox suck. I'm just kidding. That's a fair question. Look, come on, people. That's why I came. Look, I'm just giving you the question. No, I got you. I'll answer your question. I'll answer your question. Look, let me take you to January 20th, 2017. I put my left hand on Ronald Reagan's Bible and I raised my right hand. And I swore an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. And it ended with a prayer. So help me God. My son, who's a captain in the United States Marine Corps, reminded me one time that it's the exact same oath that he took. It was a promise I made to the American people. It was a promise I made to Almighty God. Now, I know you might have a different impression about what my duties and responsibilities were on January 6th. And I'm happy to talk to you about it. The truth is that uh, states conduct our elections. They do. And once Iowa certifies the elections, when there are questions, you can go to court. Our campaign in 2020 had more than 60 lawsuits in courts around the country. There were also states that conducted recounts under the law. But when all that was done, if you read Article 2 of the Constitution, which I recommend to you very respectfully, Article 2 says once the states send their electoral votes to the Congress of the United States, the Vice President, as President of the Senate, will preside over a joint session of Congress. And what it says is at that joint session, the electoral votes shall be opened and shall be counted. It doesn't say may. It doesn't say you can send them back to the states. It doesn't say you can reject votes. Even though my former running mate and uh, many of his outside lawyers told me that that authority was there, I knew there never was. I mean, look, there's almost no idea more on american than the notion that any one person could pick the American president. He's right. If, if Mike Pence could have done that, just think about this. If Mike Pence could have stopped that, Kamala Harris could stop it in the next election. It makes no sense. It's never been done. All of the constitutional experts say no. Um, it was nonsense. The idea that that was treason is absurd. Good answer for Mike Pence. Whether you like the man or not, God bless him. I can't look. You just I can't wait to talk to him next week on stage at the gathering. Now I got to tell you about Patriot Mobile, uh, who I am just so delighted to have on the program. They're such a good company. They're a cell phone provider. They give you guaranteed great service. PatriotMobile.com slash Eric. Uh, you go there. You can move your cell service to them. You can transfer your phone number to them, or you can get a brand new phone number from them. You can get an unlocked phone and take it to them, or get a new phone from them. You can also call them 972 Patriot and tell them I sent you. You get free activation with my name. And here's the thing they, as they grow their profits, grow their giving to the conservative causes you care about. 
So you're expanding the conservative movement just by doing business with a company that shares your values. They're Christian conservatives. They operate a great company. They give you guaranteed great service using the same cell towers you're probably already using. So go to patriotmobile.com slash Eric. You can see a detailed coverage map for 5G data voice, all of that. Or you can call them 972-PATRIOT. Tell them Eric sent you. Get free activation with my name, patriotmobile.com slash Eric. Did you know China has made it a priority to teach students financial literacy starting in preschool? Financial literacy isn't taught in our elementary schools, and parents lack the resources to teach it at home. American kids are yet again being left behind. Now there's a great way for parents and grandparents to help the kids they love learn about finance, thanks to the Sensibles. And at bcs-kids.com, the Sensibles are a team of animated superheroes who help kids age 6 to 12 develop smart money habits in a fun way bcs-kids.com was created to channel this multimedia resource to kids everywhere. Buy a subscription for your loved ones, and each month, they'll get a Sensibles kit in the mail with an entertaining DVD, comic book, and activities. Digital subscriptions are also available. They'll also get access to an interactive website with a library of lessons, fun activities, and more. Want 20% off the monthly subscription costs? Visit at bcs-kids.com, enter the promo code ERIC, my name, E-R-I-C-K. It's the sensible thing to do. Subscribe today at bcs-kids.com. It's an open line Friday here at the Eric Erickson Show. The phone number, 877-973-7425. If you want to be on, as always, text ERIC to 33777 uh, to get the show notes. Follow me around social media and the like. Uh, But more importantly, in all seriousness... If you have some spare change lying around, the wildfires in Hawaii have now taken 55 lives, destroyed thousands of acres, ruined people's livelihood. Um, If you would text donate to 33777, more important than anything else, um, if you text donate to 33777, I will send you back a link to the Hawaiian Salvation Army. They're on the ground now, and all of your dollars, they're not going to administrative overhead. Your dollars are actually going to help people right now. Uh, They're without homes, without clothes, without furnishings, um, without food, and they are on the ground there already. The, The fires are still going on, and they're already there helping. So please text, donate to 33777. Uh, if you got spare change, and I know times are tight and it's hard to give, but if you can, uh, these people could use your help. Text donate to three three seven seven seven. Um, I I gotta I gotta talk about Asa Hutchinson. I'm not inviting Asa Hutchinson, the former governor of Arkansas, to the gathering next week. Uh, the thought never even crossed my mind. Uh, He is completely out of step with conservatives in America. He is completely out of step with the uh, cultural conservatism of conservative primary voters in America. He has been belittling of the fight against uh, sterilizations of children, gender-affirming care, Uh, so-called. He's just not there. And, and, It is telling to me that Asa Hutchinson, former governor of Arkansas, he was a Bush appointee, used to be a guy who who, who people paid attention to. He's out of step with where the Republican Party is, and he's running in the Republican primary, and it is telling to me that he's going on MSNBC. Will Hurd... Asa Hutchinson doing MSNBC. I'm sorry, but if you are running in the Republican primary, you have no reason to go on MSNBC. And you can be high-minded and say, well, I'm going and taking my message to them, except he's not, Heard's not. What they're doing is they're going on MSNBC and affirming to the MSNBC audience how bad the Republican Party is. That's what they're doing. They're giving left-wing talking points. Asa Hutchinson went on MSNBC and actually complained, he complained that having to hang out with voters in Iowa hurts the Democratic process. No, no, I'm not making that up. Here he is in his own words to MSNBC. 
fact is I'm not a self-funded candidate uh, and and the RNC rules is burdensome on the candidates to instead of focusing on other ways of raising money and focusing on uh, other styles of campaigning I've got to spend all of my time at the Iowa State Fair trying to get on the debate stage with one dollar contributions and so uh, that's not helpful and it's not good for our democratic process so the Republican Party has decided to embrace a rule of the Democratic Party. You, re- you remember in 2016, Republicans had uh, they had the grown-up debate and the small kids, de- the, the kids' table debates. I mean, you had like 24 candidates trying to debate, which you can't actually do, so they had to split them in half and shuffle people around. What the Republicans decided to do this time is set some polling and small-dollar donor con- contribution caps. Or floors, I should say. You've got to poll at a certain level, but you also have to have, I think, 40,000 grassroots donors, small dollar donors. So you can't just go to rich people and say, write me checks. You've got to have 40,000 donors. Now, those uh, rich and poor alike are capped. Uh, There's like, what is it, $3,600 I think you can give to a candidate for primary The Federal Election Commission sets a amount of money you can give for a primary and a general, and you've got to have 40,000 of those donors, which means you've you've got to actually have a base of some level of support outside of five billionaires who can fund your super PAC. I don't think Hutchinson even has five billionaires funding super PACs. He doesn't have any support. And his proclamation that it's bad for the democratic process for him to have to hang out at the Iowa State Fair and meet voters. Isn't that democracy? Isn't that democracy? Hanging out with voters and getting their votes is democracy. It is the democratic process. It has been the democratic process in this country for generations. And this guy running as a Republican goes on MSNBC, a channel few, if any, Republicans even watch, to complain about how uh, it, bad it is that he's got to go hang out with the voters when I should be able to talk about my policies here on television and pontificate about what I think voters should do. That This is the, you idiot. Do you not understand the job is to get voters to vote for you and you don't want to go get voters to vote for you? You want to have I minded conversations about the future of the country. You don't get to do that if you don't get buy-in from the voters because, believe it or not, there's this thing in America called people. And people are stupid. And you've got to convince a bunch of stupid people to give their time and energy and money towards you to get something called a vote to advance to something called an election. It's the way the game's been played since George freaking Washington, who bribed people with alcohol to get their votes. That's a true story. George Washington knew what he had to do. He didn't go to the local paper of the day and, how then shall I govern when I have to go to the people and tell the people, I'm George Washington, you should love me. And they did. Once he gave him some alcohol. Maybe Asa Hutchinson should be passing out some alcohol, but I believe he's a teetotaler. He's not going to go have a beer with the voters. Here's the funny, ironic side piece in this. We've been told for months on in ad nauseum by Trump supporters that Ron DeSantis is bad with people. The more people get to know him, the more they dislike him. He's not good in the room. He doesn't like to work the room. He's on the spectrum. Maybe he's got autism. You don't see Ron DeSantis complaining that he's got to go hang out with uh, Virginia B. Boodle of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. 
You don't hear Ron DeSantis complain about taking his kids to the Iowa State Fair to eat fried Twinkies. You don't see Chris Christie complaining. Chris Christie's out there. Chris Christie, sizable guy. He's out there sweating and working the crowds, firing up the crowds. He's spending most of his time in New Hampshire. He's kind of written off Iowa, but he's going out there. You don't see Chris Christie going on MSNBC saying, I think it's a terrible day in democracy that I have to actually participate in the democratic process when I would rather be here with you, Joy Reid, telling you what I wish to do for the country so that no one in America can watch because your ratings suck. Man drop out. Asa Hutchinson. Let me look directly in my camera here. Asa Hutchinson drop out of the Republican primary. If you truly believe, as you stated on MSNBC, that it's not good for the democratic process, that you have to participate in the democratic process by trying to convince voters to support your campaign and give you their treasure and their time and their vote, you need to drop out. Time has moved past you. Cultural issues have moved past you. The Republican Party has moved past you. And you as a candidate somehow think your time is more valuable than hanging out with the voters of Iowa to get them to vote for you. That tells me how out of touch you've become and you're not going to resonate. And whether this is a vanity play or a um, chaotic campaign, whatever it is, it's not working. You're running for president of the United States of America, and you look miserable. You're doing a crappy job of running for a Republican primary if you're going on MSNBC anyway, because the Republican voters in Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina that you need, they're not watching. The Republican donors you need, they're not watching MSNBC. And that's where you've chosen to complain about the democratic process for the audacity of the system requiring you to actually glad hand voters, which is what you as a politician are supposed to do. Are you so removed from the system now you forgot what it's like to kiss babies and pretend to like stupid people showing up at a fair, getting sweaty and eating fried Twinkies? It's what you're supposed to do. You signed up for that job. You, Asa Hutchinson, decided this is what you wanted to do, to now go on MSNBC and complain about the process you decided to submit to and wish the rules were different is a damning indictment on your fitness for the job. Go retire. Maybe angle for a commentator job on MSNBC so you can every day stare into the camera and say how terrible it is for democracy that politicians running for office have to meet the voters. But spare us your self-righteousness in a campaign that is going nowhere. There are already enough candidates. It's not that you have a lane or don't have a lane. It's that you don't have a candidacy that's going anywhere. And you and your consultants are apparently the only people in America who do not realize it. But I can tell you, Asa Hutchinson, as someone who has a very good record of running people for office back when I was a political consultant, If my political consultant told me it was fine to go on MSNBC and complain that glad-handing voters impeded the democratic process, and none of your people around you told you this wasn't a good idea, you probably should fire them all. And if you're not going to get out of the race, start over with new people. Because the fact that you went on MSNBC, running in a Republican primary, and spent your time complaining and bellyaching about requirements that you have sufficient support from the grassroots of the Republican Party to get the nomination and get on a debate stage, I I have no idea why you're doing this. The problem is no one else knows either. It just looks like you're trying to angle for a contract on MSNBC, and I'm pretty sure being a former governor of Arkansas can get you that without you having to dare get your hands dirty dealing with the masses of Iowa. You know, Americans for Prosperity has no problem glad-handing Americans, meeting them. They're actually on a road trip across America telling people how bad Bidenomics is. They're willing to go do the grassroots work Asa Hutchinson thinks is a threat to democracy. All you got to do is go to um, uh, americansforprosperity.org slash Eric, americansforprosperity.org slash E-R-I-C-K. Go to AFP, sign up with them. 
Become an activist. Uh, participate in the road tour. Uh, learn how Bidenomics is bad. Learn what AFP is doing nationwide at the state and federal level to block Bidenomics and get it reversed. How they're helping get conservatives elected who are committed to opposing Bidenomics and restoring some sanity to our economic enterprise in this country. All you have to do is real easy. You go to americansforprosperity.org slash E-R-I-C-K. AmericansforProsperity.org slash Eric. Sign up today. They've got over 4 million committed activists. They're committed to free markets and free people. Americans for Prosperity wants you to learn how to talk to your neighbors and your elected officials about binomics and explain why it's bad. AmericansforProsperity.org slash E-R-I-C-K. Hello there. Welcome. It is Eric Erickson. The phone number is 877-973-7425. It is an open line Friday and... At the bottom of the next hour, the Attorney General of the state of Florida is going to join me on radio to talk about uh, Governor DeSantis removing that state attorney from Orlando. State attorney, a pretty progressive state attorney who has willfully chosen not to prosecute a bunch of crimes in large part because she decided, um, well, it was there was too much racial bias. Good gracious. You know, I, I played you Asa Hutchinson's clip. I, I got to play you this from Will Hurd um, also on – it's funny how they're all – all these Republican candidates going on MSNBC. Well, look, climate change is real. Climate change is affecting all of us. Uh, you know, to be f- impacted by climate change, you just have to be human. Um, one of the things you didn't mention is, look, the Gulf of Mexico, uh, mm-hmm. the water temperatures mm-hmm. in the Gulf of Mexico have been outrageous. Phoenix, I think for the first time in history, was a city that averaged over 100 uh, degrees for, for an entire month. We haven't seen that. The unfortunate pictures of what's happening in Maui right now, um, all these things, all these things are impacted. We can address the climate and economic, you know, and move forward economically mm-hmm. at the same time. But it's going to require us to double down on technologies. And, and so, yeah, climate change, uh, climate change is, is real. Climate change is, is, is um, humans, you know, are having an um, impact on this. And this okay. is not something that, that America can solve alone. Just, we got to be working. We got to be just, working with our allies and our enemies. <sighs> on a, again, let's go to MSNBC or wherever. Let, let's let's tell the left what they want to hear. And by the way, I, I, I don't care your position on climate change. I just find it notable. None of them want to mention what we're experiencing right now is this volcano, which everyone in the media was comfortable telling us through March and then suddenly stopped telling us, even as new research came out that showed, one, it actually put even more water vapor into the atmosphere than first thought, and two, would actually uh, only just start feeling the effects this summer. But they've memory hold it. They just can't bring themselves to tell us the truth. Speaking of, when we come back, before the Attorney General comes on, I want to talk about the man the FBI gunned down in Utah who was making threats to the President of the United States. Because, I, you know, in the past, my reaction would have immediately been to uh, believe the FBI, and I can't help it. I just don't anymore. Did they really need to do a pre-dawn raid? Did they really? Did this man really need to end up dead? I'm not so sure. And I just I, I want to talk a little bit about that when we come back. I'll give you the facts. You can decide for yourself. I don't want to tell you what to think, but I do want you to think about it. 